is uh, Dr. Chi Chang Ling. Uh, so he's a distinguished professor of engineering at uh, the Ohio State University. And uh, his research spans through system and software security. And we recently also work on media app analysis. And he has different type of awards, like IEEE Fellow, SM Distinguished Member, and also like the NASA Career, AFSO Young Investor Award, number of them. So let's welcome him. <laughs> Thanks so much for the introduction. Uh, good morning. My great pleasure uh, to you sit here and um, talk about some of our, of our recent efforts on Bluetooth security privacy. Um, this actually started from our side project. So I will share, share with you some of our experience and also um, the lessons we learned about uh, how we analyze uh, Bluetooth. So, um, so what is Bluetooth? This is a technology ubiquitous. Sure, everybody in this room has a phone. Uh, your phone uses Bluetooth. Um, and today there are two types of Bluetooth. One is uh, Bluetooth No Energy, the other is Bluetooth Classic. So the one Bluetooth Classic are the ones we use that you hear about use. Um, no energy are the ones you usually used in the IoT devices. Um, and uh, uh, for the classic, they have uh, high power consumption, and usually also the the, the the communication distance is short, uh, but for the no 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 energy, they the no energy right. I think they they they, uh, they use less power and and they can can talk to a long distance. And um, there are numerous applications uh, with uh, Bluetooth, uh, your uh, your keyboards, uh, your uh, earbuds, right, um, and your uh, your watch. Um, and I want to particularly highlight this one, the the um, the the AirTag. So the AirTag is used for asset tracking. People are using it for tracking your uh, wallet. Uh, you know what? Um, one of my labors actually, the uh, the he uh, 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 he puts uh, assets. I mean the, the AirTag in, um, um, in in his car. So uh, the other day, you know, you know what? So uh, he put the keys in the car and the car was stolen, and then he used AirTag to. Track where the car is and and it brings from the car. So so basically this asset um uh you know asset tracking right usually sounds like maybe uh if you if you pay either some some service it costs a lot but this this uh air pack technology is so cost effective and you can use for many many uh, uh scenarios. Um so basically my point is this technology is is everywhere. Um and um then you may wonder, hey, why they call Bluetooth? Why do they call Relatus, right? So, well, this technology was named after the the king of uh, of Denmark. Um, uh, um, his name is called uh, Harald uh, Olsen. So he had he had a, a bunch uh, So that is a Bluetooth. Um, his contribution is he united the tribes of Denmark. And then the 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 the, uh, the community named this technology after him is with which this technology can unite all those peripherals, various computing devices. Um, and uh, then with history, so this technology was invented back to 1994, so uh, 30 years, and it evolved to like five generations, some very similar to our phones, right? The, the, Cell phone industry, you know, this went into to five G, and and we we today we are in the Bluetooth five point um, and uh, I particularly highlight there are in the Bluetooth no energy, that is basically Bluetooth four point oh. There are two um um a milestone. One one is called uh, uh um Bluetooth four point four point five or four point two. Later in my talk, I will uh, revisit this why I emphasize that. Um, so basically, here just show you, yeah, the history of Bluetooth and their evolutions, and speed gets increased, and battery consumption gets gets reduced, and tons of applications, particularly in the IoT space. Um, so um, some statistics, and uh, here talk about the annual shipments uh, in 2024. About 5.4 billion uh, Bluetooth devices gets shipped, and um, the projection, right? You have like uh, eight percent. Uh, growth after a year. Um, among those um, 5 billion devices, um, 1 billion is actually the, the one we often use in the earbuds. So for the, the Bluetooth Classic. So uh, uh, um, here, just give you some kind of perspective, right? It's like uh, a huge number of such devices get, get produced uh, uh, annually. And um, 
So while we are looking at this, right, and for, for folks who are familiar with my research, so my background is more on the program analysis and reverse engineering side, and then why I'm looking into pollution. So, well, this was started from 20, uh, 2018 with my students. I was very curious about how this IoT devices talk to talk to the phone. And then we started to look at the SDK of the, the, the IoT SDK, and, and we look at particularly how Bluetooth uh, stack, uh, how developers can use Bluetooth APIs and talk to their, their I mean, pro program their app and talk to their device. From there, we start to look into the detail and gradually, gradually find tons of yeah, interesting uh, vulnerabilities and that's all there. So, um, so in, and also, you know, in 2020, the pandemic happens, right? And then uh, Apple, Google developed the contact tracing protocol uh, interest is, is foundation on the pollution of low energy. Uh, and that's where how we get into this space and and, and uh, um, a part of the papers there. And in today's talk, I'm not going to talk about all of those. Uh, instead, I will talk about uh, three pieces of work. Um, one is on the uh, using this, uh, 2020, how we can uh, uh, break the security, basically how you break the clearance. And, and then 2020, uh, 2022, we have this paper about the privacy and how you can um, you know, track users based on their flaws in, in uh, uh, how they uh, manage the, 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 their, their macro randomization. And I briefly talk about this uh, in this uh, paper last year. So <clears throat> basically, I will cover um, the security and 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 and, and the privacy, security and the privacy. Uh, that's the the, uh, the lessons we learned. Okay. So um, before that, let's let's first understand right how does this um, my Bluetooth device talk to my app. Let's understand uh, in a little detail. So assume uh, we have a Fitbit device and then we have a Fitbit app. And then how does this app establish the connection between the device, right? What's going on on the line? Well, um, typically, right, you purchase a device like that, you will also go to App Store, download our Fitbit app, right? And then you say, hey, let's first step is we have to establish the collection, right? Essentially, how they can authenticate each other, right? Basically, it's like these two devices must establish our communication channel. They must exchange some cryptography key, right? Fundamentally, it's like that. So let's see how it works. So basically, yeah, you say, oh, step number one is to pair it. And then the pairing process is you will open the app, okay? And the app will you know, start pairing, or will we'll ask the OS, is there any device nearby? Right, OS will listen, and then look at all this, you know, advertisement packets. And then when OS received that, right? So OS after that, say, okay, I found some devices, and then let's start to exchange some features. This is very similar to TLS protocol, right? The browser, when they have to when they establish that in the servers, they also is, is exchange some kind of uh, crypto suites. Right? Uh, and, and, and here, yes, let's exchange some features uh, if the device has keypads, oh, if the device has uh, has a screen. And, and then based on different you know, features uh, the device has, they can use different protocols to, to, to the parent. So for example, you have keypads, something like, oh, you can enter digits, right? If you have screen, it's like, oh, you can see the numbers, right? So basically, yeah, they, they, they need the same feature. Well, this is very important. Yeah, we also find that later. Uh, and, and, and after that, so they are going to, uh, uh, you know, establish the, 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 the collection. Right, and then they will, you know, exchange some kind of keys. So here uh, we use uh, they're very good at long and and then um, during this, you know, uh, um, exchange process, right, they have to select the parent methods. So today, the Bluetooth uh, uh, low energy they support like four types of parent methods: adjust works, potentially uh, auto band, and neural comparison. Right, uh, they have different names for that. Right? Fundamentally, fundamentally, what they do? Well, fundamentally, they're going to exchange the cryptographic key. That's it. And then basically, they just have different constraints to exchange that key. Um, so, so yeah, they are, they're going to select you know one of those parameters based on the features they exchange it. And after that, right, they, 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 the, the, the two parties they can store our long term key, uh, and then they can use that to later, right, for the communication. Oh, step number four. There's also an important step there. They have they, after the you know uh, exchange LTK, they also will exchange our IRK for identity resolution resolution key. This is so important later what we use for identity resolution to protect the privacy. And we will explain that in the private talk. Okay. So um 
And, and then after that, yes, we have encrypted communication channel. So then the, the you know both parties can decrypt the packets. This is like oh a high level, right? Uh, when I when we we made you know uh, uh, got an app and a device, we pair and, and later we establish this communication. Then let's zoom in to say, hey, how does this parent, this whole types of parent really works? Why they call this name, right? Um, so uh, let's look at uh, how it works. Like I say, right, fundamentally is you two party have to exchange your symmetric key. How to do that? Well, you have probably probably you can use that, right? So fundamentally, yes, they use ECTH to do the key exchange. So it's going to two party, they added to Bob. Right? Here's a refresh memory of your like, cryptography. Um, Alice gen generates our random key pair, uh, private key and public key. And, and then Bob generates another one, right? And then how to do that? Basically, they change the public key. And and, uh, and after that, right, Alice can calculate the shared key based on her private key and Bob's public key. And similarly, Bob do similarly. And eventually, they uh, they agree on the shared key, right? This is uh, at a very high level with four different type of pairing method fundamentally safe. Um, and then let's look at those four pairing methods, right? How it works. Um, first one is passive entry. This one is considered secure. Also, let's look at why it's secure, right? Um, so what is passive entry? Uh, basically. Um, it's um, it's one device uh, display our uh, digits, okay? Um, the other device will enter that. Okay, so basically here, like, oh, it's a, because my uh, bit has three to display digits, right? And one, two, four, five, six, it's play that. And then also this TV, TV, yes, they have to do this uh, public photography, right? And then and, 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 and at the phone, this phone has keypads, right? And phone can enter digits, so the phone enters this, one, two, three, five, six. And eventually, uh, this is how they calculate that. So this I uh, serve as a lungs. And uh, basically, they take this lungs together with the with the private key and public key, and eventually they generate our uh shared symmetric key. Okay. So here, like you can see, those is this one is very important. Like this lungs are so important there. Um and then let's look at um man in middle. So here, all of this, you know, the pairing process, if you talk about security. Sometimes we can break cryptography, right? Fundamentally, it's, it's about we're not going to really brute force an AST, uh, okay? It's more about active mind middle, like can I cheat each other act as an active mind middle? So here, let's assume there's a malicious guy, and then this malicious guy, because the malicious guy doesn't, um, um, let's, let's say, uh, oops. so um, basically, right? The malicious guy, if you see, they don't know these numbers. That is why, um, let's assume, right? So here, um, malicious guy wants to do the active mind middle and get that you know, better key. However, right, because malicious guy, then when they calculate that, that uh, uh, launch, they don't have that, okay? Because user, right, let's say user say that one, user do it, but our adversary don't say the device, don't do the digits there. That's why they cannot establish this, um, you know, shared, uh, shared key. This is how, why they call pass key entry is secure. Um, and then uh, the other secure one is called numerical comparison. So numerical comparison, basically they display two digits there. Uh, I don't know whether you have that experience, but I, I'm sure you even have the experience of using this one, right? When, when, when I use my hair, my Bluetooth with my, my car, I have to do this, enter some digits, right? Um, and, and, and for the numerical comparison, how it works, basically they display two digits in the screen and the user Use I to, to compare and, and confirm. So, so uh, uh, how does this work, right? Well, they basically calculate this digits with the hash. So simple, right? How they display that digits and user confirm this because this is the hash calculate that and user say, oh, match secure. Um, so this is a numerical comparison and uh, and they eventually calculate that uh, shared symmetry key. And then why this is secure against man, uh, man in the middle? Because man in the middle guy, right? You think, hey, the guy man in the middle sent the public to there and then probably this, this guy. If they calculate, you can see, uh, wouldn't match, right? So that's why uh, fundamentally, uh, fundamentally, this numerical comparison depend against the uh, active man in the middle. And then there's another secure uh, method called out of band. So you can you just say, oh, human being gets involved to see 
his eyes to the comparison. That's a channel there. What about you use some other channel like AFC to ex exchange that digits, right? So that is called alpha band. Maybe you can use some other whatever uh, you know, channel to ex exchange that nonce and eventually gods are uh, shared, uh, 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 you know, secret. This is why alpha band is secure. Then they say, hey, that just works. People go, just works. Why it just works is not secure? Why is that, right? How that just works fundamentally work? Well, still, this is fundamental, right? I mean, I mean the element. And, and the difference is, if you look at code, they hard code that. That's it. In the implementation, it's hard code. Six times about zero. And then, this is insecure, right? Because uh, bad guys also use that, and they eventually uh, they have our you know, share, share the key, talk to both parties. Um, that's why this is considered insecure. And, and also, how often this could happen, right? This happened during the parent stage. So that basically means if you really want to get the key, you must somehow reset. If you're able to reset the device, let them talk, exchange, then you can hide it, right? Uh, so here we talk about, we talk about I'm going to use quantum computers to break the ASP. Okay, no, no, that's not, not, not like that. Okay, it's about the parent process. We're going to have an active man in the middle and, uh, and to break it. So um, here I'm talking about the security that, and hey, then how we can really achieve this active man in the middle, right? So here we have, we have, we have this question. You have a secure pair, like a like numerical uh, comparison or, 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 or pass the entry, right? This is secure. So even device use secure pattern is impossible for us for our attacker to still to still use just works pair. That's the question we ask. We realize this is possible. Uh, why? Because of this, right? Because of uh, some kind of uh, key exchange, uh, feature exchange. So um, for folks working like uh, cellular network, you you heard about different generations. Like 5G, done with 4G, or done with 2G, or 2G is very insecure, like SMS, those applications, they are all. This is how the fake base stations are attacks. So here we realize, yes, similar to like fake base station, right? This is like a, a, we can have some kind of fake device there to talk to this postcard to cheap them, and then they the downgrade, okay? So uh, this is actually how uh, we call downgrade attack, right? How does it work? Essentially, we're going to act, act, act as many middle, okay? Then you wonder, we already use secure pair and how do you do this? Well, you could have third to jam it, right? First to jam those pair, maybe two device already pair security. But your bad guys come in for jam the device. You're like, ah, oh, I cannot talk to the device anymore. Maybe I have a pair. This is where a hacker can come in. So a hacker first is a fake device, right? Let's say I'm going to use a fake uh, peripheral, talk to Mobile. I can also use a fake mobile talk to the peripheral, right? Because this is coming software that's provided from the protocol. Man, we just say they're cheating each other. So, yes, we can have an active guy there lie to the operating system. Say, hey, operating system, I don't have, uh, previously we used numerous comparison to the parent. I will say, I don't have that screen anymore. Then you have to go, you don't have screen, let's just use stuff for the Basically, my point here is you can see. Um, so this is how our time works, right? So first of all, we cheat the uh, operating system. So, hey, uh, operating system, uh, we have to repair because we've somehow lost the connection. And then uh, they can say, hey, I don't have a uh, key pass. I don't have screen anymore. Let's use our just for spare. And then uh, he can also talk to the device. Hey, device, uh, I'm, I'm, I want to pair with you. Uh, let's use just for spare. And, uh, basically, the device doesn't remember. So basically, the flow here is, Operating system and the device to, to remember, to, to track the history. Oh, yesterday we used secure pair, but today somehow we downgraded it. I should remember that. So here we basically explore that flow. And, and this was 20, uh, 20, uh, 20, we test all the devices in the market. Uh, nobody realized this flow could happen. And Apple, Google, the they, they, they operating system, they, they, have, they have this problem. So basically, uh, so here this is all very um, um, severe because the guy. Active man middle can steal some other secret like the like power of day. Uh, because when they exchange that, right? After they do the exchange, they will exchange identity key. So anniversary actually publish that. So um, later, that's very severe for privacy. I'm not ever explain later. So basically here, uh, this is uh, the attack to downgrade. You um, first disrupt the communication and then initiate the collection because operating system never and device never remembers the history. 
and they just need to upload it. Um, we tested it, all the, all the devices in the market, they were uh, vulnerable, and, uh, and Apple even gave us a CV. Uh, and uh, so this was uh, this was the security. So you can see, hey, we're, not, we're talking about Bluetooth security, right? How it works. We, we, we found, oh, during the appearance process, they have to exchange features. And when they exchange features, then they're not going to be live. And then the uh, operating system also doesn't remember all of this history. And then this can be exported. Uh, and with MSU uh, So uh, this was published like four years ago. And, and next, I'm going to talk about the privacy. I just explained the security, right? Uh, you can actually break the communication. Um, and uh, for privacy, so here's more about the, 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 the address, okay? Because think about, assume you have a Bluetooth devices, right? Uh, your Bluetooth device has identified the MAC address and this MAC address actually can let you here. If, if the same MAC address, different location, people can say, oh, you are here, you are there, right? I can know your location, but this is location time. Um, um, and here, basically, we, we talk about address. Then there are um, different type of MAC address. So uh, for Bluetooth addresses, they have like random address, they also have public address. Okay, so you may wonder why they use public address, right? Well, public address is often used in the feed. You know, the, the, the device, they will move, and then you can, you can use public address. For the device like your phone, you must use random address because like I said, you can try users. Um, then for the random address, you have a random private, and you have also random static. A random static is like random only once, okay? The random private is more like how you could have like every 15 minutes randomize your map address, okay? So uh, in random private, you also have like maybe just some kind of uh, collection between randomization, okay? Or totally uh, long association at all, unresolvable. So this one is like resolvable because uh, even though it's random, I still can know who you are. Uh, so basically, yeah, these are the different addresses. The one of our broker is this like random track, right? Supposed to be random, suppose you cannot track. And we have to show we still can track users, even though their MAC address are random. Okay. So then let's say um, how you know does device know each other, right? So um, for the privacy, like I said, um, for let's say Apple device, every 15 minutes your iPhone will randomize your MAC address. For the Android, right? Android actually is, you know, maybe considered even more secure because their unicable is also random. You cannot predict, you know, when the new randomization will happen. So here, right, fundamentally, um, the they're going to then then if you randomize your MAC address, how does the other party still know about you? Right? That's the challenge there. Well, the way to solve that is the RP. The RP is a secret. Cannot believe if RP gets leaked, totally your your privacy gets leaked. So um, when after they 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 they, they, they you know finish the pair with right, they have install this RP, and then how does this they resolve it right? Now let's look at the detail. The MAC address uh, when they get randomized, how does the other party still resolve that? So well, they have an RP, right? Each party has an RP here. And let's say. So they say this guy is going to get a new MAC address, okay? How does MAC address look like? It's 48, 48 bits. The first 24 bits are random number. You know, random number, first 24. And after that, it's concatenate with our hash. It's an HMAC. Hash of your random number with RP. RP is a secret. Okay, RP cannot be linked. So this is how to get the 48 bits up, right? So basically, every time you get that 48 bits, you can say, oh, first 24 is random number, and uh, next 24 is, uh, is HMAC. And then how I calculate the HMAC? Because I have the RK in my books, right? Now, this is the generation side. They generate this a MAC address. And then, right, and then the guy, the receiver, the receiver, right, receive that. Because I know you. How do I, how do I, put, I know you, right? Because I have your RK. And then I'm going to resolve it. How do I resolve it? Right? You take this random number, you take all the RP you have, iterate, calculate. They might be matched. Oh, I know you because I have your RP. This is like how they know each other. Okay, based, based on that secret, right? This is 2010, they designed this, okay? So, right, basically, they iterate all the RP, they can resolve this uh, identity. Then, you know, in our investigation, we found something interesting. Um, in 2014, Bluetooth introduced a feature called allow list. It sounds like they're going to only selectively talk to some device. 
if you are in my error list, I talk to you as I will reject communication. It's not that very secure and also privacy preserved. I think better because you don't have to respond to every tax. Okay, that may be their motivation. And then basically that means ah, oh, a lot of these. That means there could be a communication pattern. I see that you know, there are earbuds for Google phones. There are in this classroom, there are a lot of phones, right? And maybe there's some earbuds. And then and then our tactic is to observe. Can observe, ah, interesting. I see this device, right? Um talk to that that um that earbud. Okay, I see that communication pattern, right? You can say, oh, that's something interesting. Then, then that basically means, okay, if given time, let's assume, make some assumption there. Let's say, um, so this is 55, this is 56, some, some interval you want to get a new random microphone. Okay, and let's assume this one hasn't run much yet. Now it's an opportunity pattern here because the, this is a lot of lists. That, that earbud only talk to this phone, even though this phone manager is randomized. I still know it's it must be this guy, right? So basically here it says passive, just listen, just look at the communication traffic. You still be able to figure out, even though this is H map, I'm not talking about use whatever content to break the arrow tail, okay? No, no, no. It's you still follow their protocols and we just uh based on this communication pattern to 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 de anonymize that uh, MAC address, okay? Basically build their association. So this is what we found, right? We found, oh, this are not least actually is a side channel. Um, based based on how they communicate, because this kind of exclusive use type of uh, communication pattern, right? And and then they, similar to many other such such channels, people you know have discovered, right? If you use a lot of things to do to break them, so here we say, ah, a lot of this is also interesting can be used as uh, a such channel. And in this, you may still notice, well, this is passive. What happened in this classroom? So many phones. Uh, what happened in that interval? I still I didn't see that, right? What happened, like I said. If um if this um if this also gets randomized, this is 35, because I see 35, there's E before V, what happens it's also backwards randomized. They have no idea the pair, right? So basically what my point here is passive is limited. What happens if you have do you have any other technique to, to, to break this, right? Break the macro randomization. Um that's our second finding comes from. Okay. So first of all, I say, oh yeah, we can do some kind of uh, use our list to prove uh to break the macro address. And then here, here the, the 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 second finding is remember the macro address generation I talk about, right? Um, this was designed in 2010, and basically they use uh, HMAP, very simple algorithm, HMAP, right? And the series is that. If you look at this very carefully, huh, this one I can I can replace, right? There's nothing really to replace. So basically, the point here is what happened. I'm a hacker. I capture a one MAC address. Let's say Dr. Charles MAC address, I catch it. And then I replace. I replace this MAC address, all this other device, or other peripheral. You can imagine his peripheral will probably respond that, right? Regardless of where it is, because that is the parent they already established. Okay, so basically here is, yeah, we can just replay the MAC address. And then there's, there must be a guy who will respond. And the guy who responds, and I can see anonymous, right? So yeah, this is fundamentally we found ah the map address can be replaced and we combine together with a lot of these together, this becomes a very powerful attack. Um so how to do that attack essentially like let's assume the box station you got a map address there and, and, and later right you you basically uh inject our let's say say for example I let's assume I capture your bus uh map address, I advertise your bus, and then somewhere the phone, whatever whoever the phone responds to my year bus. That is the guy has the same, you know, same user, right? That's how basically uh, de anonymize uh, the the the, the map address, Okay, so we're not we, we didn't break it. Okay, we didn't break the RP. Okay, no. The, the way to break the, the we break the association basically. Even though the map address are completely randomized, we still can associate it to the same device. Um. So right, this is basically how it works. And again, imagine all the entire industry they never anticipate this attack. And it's all flawed. Uh, so we tested in 20, uh, 2020, yeah, and, uh, and this period takes two years to pass. So, um, and all those like development boards or the devices in the market, they're all vulnerable. Um, uh, and also, we, um, this is our responsible discovery process. Uh, yeah, at the center, we disclosed to the special interest group, right? They, they, they actually filed the same for this, so we didn't file. And then we talked to the, the TI, <coughs> manufactured this, the, the chips. 
Uh, and um, they follow this uh, special interest groups to, to, to do that. And also we talked to, um, we got response from, from, from uh, Google. Google also give us a bunch of uh, 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 and, and also other vendors like Microsoft and Apple, they all, right? Because this is an industry-wide problem. And this problem is also a patch, right? If you patch that, you have to change the entire ecosystem. So, um, um, and um, we propose some countermeasure. Of course, you can say, oh, the randomization, how you can defeat that, right? Easy. You use uh, secret server, right? That's a well, that's a, you know, well established practice, right? Well, yeah, I mean, uh, basically the countermeasure is we can introduce, um, you know, to prevent early release, uh, that means to prevent passive side channel, you must somehow even make the synchronization window randomized. Then your attacker still cannot say, right, uh, when the new device have a new MAC address, okay? So basically, um, to, to, to mitigate side channel, you basically, uh, uh, you know, make the intro unpredictable. The app will actually still use 15 million. That's actually, I think, a bad practice. Not as secure as you can use it. Even the interval is also random, right? Um, for replay, standard practice is to second number. But the challenge here is how you can synchronize that second number. What happens the battery gets lost? All of the other issues uh, in this, right? Uh, uh, uh. So, the, um, so basically, yeah, we propose our, you know, add a second number there and, and you can uh, uh, prevent it. So, uh, and also we test the performance of all that, right? What's, what, what happened, how much battery costs is well, this will high, uh, we, we use our development, development boards to, uh, to program this. Um, okay, so I just basically explain you uh, security and privacy, right? Security can be broken, some with your attacks. Privacy can also be broken you just, uh, because of the flow of their protocols and, and their uh, MAC address and also this type side channel thing, right, to, to make uh, attacker uh, track it. So here, just show you a picture about the landscape. If you look at that process, right, here are papers published in this space. So many papers discover numerous flaws in the Bluetooth, uh, in the communication. Um, um, the one highlighted in green are the, are the words uh, we published. So, uh, and, 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 and works like here, you, you look at, uh, when the device handle to the advertisement, the, the advertisement macro thread, and kind of the UID sequence, right? There are also some privacy issues there. Uh, and and uh, an OS also could have malware, right? It could be some other things. So, uh, and even uh, in the parent, they have the execution attack, which can be, can be, can be too uh, all, all good. Um, so, basically, my point here, from highlight is, yeah, the numerous roles in this. The only issue is detail. As my students who are interested in looking at the details, you could, uh, Find flaws with uh with with, with those okay um and uh what I what we learned right what we learned from from this uh, our, our study so um for the security right this is basically uh I talk about on the downgrade attack um the fundamental issue is the the this communication when they exchange features yeah that the feature maybe you you have somehow tracked that right. Because, because when the device gets paired, you see the features, and the, the difference in the features to, to establish the, I mean, to, to, to select the select the uh, pair method, right? Because that could be live. This is very similar to uh, TLS protocols, like if I, if I, I can support AES, I say, oh, no, I only do uh, triple this, right? So to downgrade the cipher and then uh, this type of thing. So here, yeah, because there's some features there, and, and then they heard that features to, use to, to select the pair method, and this can be, uh, you know, a subordinate. So this is one with more limited, right? We can do the downgrade attack and, 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 and later, you know, for future communications or hack and uh, uh, hijack the, the track. Uh, and basically, uh, the lesson learned is about the error handling, like operating system who handle the handle this hey, somehow they cannot pair, they cannot communicate anymore, uh, and uh, they have to reestablish our new pairing, right? At that moment, operating system should be aware the error handling code should somehow Remember yesterday I used secure pair and we established that. And today somehow we are going to use the insecure pair method. Uh, why is that, right? Basically, error handling both should be robust. This is basically uh, why we talk to Apple and Google. They, they, their operating system should, uh, should be patched to, to, to remember that. Um, and, and also the, the, the priority, right? This is the most interesting part. Um, uh, I highlight here, right? There, there, there are uh, in 2010. So basically, yes. Um, 2010 is about this uh, Bluetooth 4.0, and it gets introduced, uh, and it's widely used in the phones, right? And then they realize, oh, we must randomize the MAC address. 
So the unit is macro representation. That's the angle that you can detect. It's secure, right? It's very simple, very elegant. You don't have some fixed number exchange, right? It's just one shot. And the other party has not that RP can, can, can resolve it. That's so, you know, elegant protocol. However, right? However, because of um, 2014, four years later, they introduced our allow list feature. So let's do allow lists. Let's only allow device A for device B. We get all the device because they, they can save battery. So they can do, do, use, you know, lose the energy, save battery. <laughs> However, right? when they introduced that, these two, um, um, these two combined together, we show you what. Right? So if without allow list, our attack is useless. It still cannot resolve. In, in, essentially, it's because of allow list. It allow us to replace. Okay, so that's why I think when they design that, never anticipate somebody is going to replace because it's very obvious that edge map is vulnerable to replace for so cryptography, right? Very obvious. But but the only issue is they don't have this type of feature. It's secure. But when that feature gets introduced, maybe they don't have our cryptography there anymore to look at their their specification and 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 2020, right? Six years later. We look at when we look at the protocol, we are like, ah, we can replay and we can break the all this uh, random map address. So this is the lesson learned, right? So basically, yeah, the BRE has so many features. Okay, I only talk about the allow list feature. They have some other features, okay? Um their specifications are like three thousand pages. It's very complicated. Like 5G also have like, thousands of pages specification. So Bluetooth introduced multiple new features, right? Some of those could violate their assumptions. Think about the that a lot of these features, right? It's why is their assumption they never anticipate somebody's going to replay. Uh, so uh, uh, so basically here my point is some other features maybe require scrutiny uh, scrutiny. Um, 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 so like 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 you know something like CTKD or CSRP, some other features, okay? For students who are interested, can uh, take a look on that. And also um, we were when we looked at that big figure about wow, numerous attacks, right? People have this car. He's learning principle of those to discover those tools. Right? People talk about formal methods, right? Hey, is it possible to apply formal methods here to uh, identify flows systematically? That's the question I asked you know, to my students. Uh, and, and interestingly, also in 2012, I talked about confusion or path. So that was part of the Oakland 20, uh, 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 2022. So they talk about the confusion or path. And, and, uh, and we realized, oh, okay, it's possible to use. Um, Full method to cover confusion attack. So you know full methods like a pro or time array, they actually can usually identify the elements for this uh man middle, right? Because that has, they have this very powerful primitive to do that. We just say, hey, it's possible to apply uh time array or, or pro to look at the Bluetooth theorem protocol. Is it possible to look at their uh to dis to rediscover the, the confusion attack use formal method? So confusion attack was discovered manually. We just ask this question, hey, is it possible to apply? Uh, four methods, right? So basically, yeah, that's the question we asked. And then we we we, 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 we revealed this. This was published in uh, in the uh, twenty three. Um, so what is confusion attack, right? Basically, you talk about the pairing. You have this numerical comparison. You also have this task entry, right? Those two somehow all digits there and enter digits or just some of press button. From user perspective, it could it could cause confusion. Okay. So here is that numerical comparison. Is, oh, what's here? Two digits. You're just numerical comparing the user to compare it, right? And and what is task entry is also short digits and defense only enter something. Of course, user doesn't know what have pair or do I have to enter. <laughs> That's called the confusion part. Okay, so the, the author in that study was from a human study, and 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 they, 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 this is how they discovered that flow based on their extra expertise. And then we asked this question, right? Hey, for protocol verification, is it possible to identify this flow? So again, this is numerical comparison. This is past entry. Then we have to look at the protocol diagram. So we click down, and this is this is their specification has all the protocols. Many, so many steps. This is how people in Tamarin or Prover community, when they work a protocol, they, they figure this out. Okay. So we basically uh, tear down those here in process. That's for that one, and then for uh, uh, task entry, this one, and put them together, and then the, the verification tool can actually automatically find this. Ah, oh, possibly there could be our computer path. So uh, this is how we, you know, uh, use formal methods uh, to uh, discover this. 
and uh, and uh, and they kind of do this automatically. If you write down their uh, you know, convert the specification to their language. Um, and in fact, if you discover more, uh, this is why we can publish NDSS. If you just discover, people will really very not appreciate that. Automatically. So uh, we also discovered some other you know attacks by these uh, 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 form makers. In addition to the to the computer attacks, that we discovered uh, for more others. Um, so um, this was my last slide. So uh, basically, I have to you know thank all my uh, co-authors, especially my my co and and my teacher, uh, so that's uh, all I have. Uh, thank you. There's so many attacks. They're just uh, you know, multiple devices. They're all taking the backs of different things. And you just have to make this assumption that nobody is kind of watching this whole collection of devices at any point where any of those can be. There's a rate of packet representation that you have to solve this problem. Uh, good question. So uh, I haven't seen that much in <laughs> uh, um, In theory, right, is there a randomization so independent? And uh, all those such and talk about cannot differentiate those unique patterns, maybe this, yeah, that's a fundamental way to go. So um, um, how we, without, without this, how we can deal with it? We must do the randomization. So the fundamental stuff is this, and then, and, and then we, well, we also talk about, if you randomize, the r has to know about you, they have to know some of the secrets, some of the secrets, right? I think they chose H map there. Uh, and, and, and then we, we here we talk about guys, maybe you introduce some kind of sequence number, some of the event, some of the player path, right? If they, if they follow all of those, um, I mean, let's figure out some computers, right? Break that. So maybe this could be secure. Yeah. Possible. Right. I also have a question. So in the beginning, you talk about like uh, the like uh, uh, security part of those like a uh, Bluetooth device. You mentioned about a jamming attack, mm -hmm. so like the main mission to jam the communication. So uh, I wonder like uh, how the jamming can be targeted like without uh, affecting the like uh, adversary to the like victim devices because you jam the channel. The adversary is not part with the like victim as well. Right. So how, how would you solve it? So basically, like the two devices already already uh, pair, right? right? They already communicate. Mm -hmm. Somehow you just are hacker somehow inject some traffic, disrupt the communication, right? right. The two devices say, oh, I cannot find each other. Somehow connect the block, right? Right. At this moment, you come in, adversary come in, we stop jamming with you, right? Now it's like, hey guys, let's pair. I said, oh, I don't know. Because always maybe have, I didn't realize we can just still use all the computing community. Because here, once we restart it, no, it's broken. Everything's broken. Right. right. But at this moment, uh, that uh, we just stop jamming. When you stop yeah. jamming, and then the old device, the old device still be available. Right. That's where we're saying, yes. The, 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 if they can company the main alive this, yeah, this is going to work. Okay. Right. It's just a matter of you, you stop the communication, that kind of window, what the OS and device will do. Right. Uh, so find the window. I think through our experiments, uh -huh. we do succeed. We kind of just work jam and then take. Yeah. Somehow maybe that time we know we decided still be some error states with some other stuff. But now you you fake device come in, they didn't pair. Then the OS did pair. You said tell device did pair. Device over did pair, and now you just hiding over somehow like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically the robustness of that error handling, right? Somehow I feel communication. Maybe I shouldn't start looking at new feature exchange. Do you favor that? Yeah. Thanks. Other question? So, hi, I'm very good. Uh, very good uh, talk. I uh, really appreciate that. And uh, I have a question regarding, uh, also regarding the, the first attack in relation to security. And uh, I'm wondering what is the difference in the kind of regarding that? Exactly after you got the CV number, because uh, uh, in my understanding, the uh, uh, the letter that uh, uh, received the CV may have some different uh, patches uh, like, uh, compared to the so different mechanics that you propose. Right. So um, the CV is only given by Apple. 
Those don't know how they catch the detail. So we just tell this flow. They say, hey, your operating system iOS. Maybe you should you should you should have a history. You should, in your error handling code, you should somehow maybe remember all the device you cared before and, and somehow make your error handling code robust, more robust. That's we, we suggest it. We don't we well, we didn't revisit it later still on. But they, they give us they give facility, I'm sure they should be the very serious. They should have patched this. Yeah. Wait a little Apple on later to patch that. I think companies like Apple are eventually just abandoning the right? Because there were players who talked about everything in the way. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I mean, for privacy, you can't do that because the Mac addresses are in the, the world of things, right? But for security, it's just not a good experience. They put some green slates. It's really done. Yeah. Possibly, right? You know, as we chatted about, Apple could have, Apple can build the entire ecosystem. They can just, just upgrade their. Failure and, and software in the day, right? Other, other companies can do that. So, uh, um, yeah, maybe Apple can design our very private, proprietary, or assume they have in house crypto experts to scrutinize their, their, their protocols, right? Yeah, other words, but, but yeah, you don't know. Any questions online? Yes, you mentioned that maybe like the, the defense is a downgrade attack that only remember the devices. So, so is there any sort of threat that there's that's not a very secure process of just trying to remember the devices yeah. devices for downgrading? Is that a way to attack that? Yeah. Right. Also, people probably remember it actually so far. Yeah, yeah like I don't know. That's that's all. Only the app, only the app side can remember, right? So the yeah. device side, device is not you also knew everything's new to you, right? Yeah. Maybe only said that app. I want to use that app or it pair with, with some from the outside. Maybe. Is there like maybe a minimum status you can require then? Like, have to, but again, you just don't remember that that person required them. So, right. so yeah. It's an opposite. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no problem. I guess I don't have a full question, but yeah, but yeah, that was so thank you. That was a good knowledge. We need to remember that, like, it's the first time you know the wrong Oh, uh, yeah, first time, yes. That's why the third app requires me to have someone. Yeah, through the third half, only at the parent stage, you can get the key. If later, the old, so it's like AES, mm -hmm. SSL, right? It's how you can break that channel, right? Yeah, yeah. So only to do this act in my middle, parent, get the key, and those are things. So I'm doing my phone, like, randomly choose to repair all that, feel like attackers on that. <laughs> Be careful, because that is the bottom of what's, yeah. right? But after that, it's always even secure. Yeah. But on the other, on the other hand, do you think, do you have to assume there's a spy in the room with their app? Maybe no, right? Because your phone can be on yeah. Right? Because today it's all about, they just say it's all about, they can easily hijack your phone and your phone is a malware. Then this attack doesn't have to be physically there to do these attacks. So it's just, uh, let's assume, right? The, the malware can stand as a malware threat, say, if there's some threat. And also, this type of threat may be. Their users may not care much about this, right? Only for people, important persons, right? Uh, maybe 1,500 for years, uh, their privacy is more important. And how, how, right? Anniversary with anniversary is they to work in stuff. Yeah. 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 I see. That's great question. So you talked about what about Wi-Fi, what about even broadly, what about other virus can be universal? They could be, for example. I think again, it's about I my takeaway would be details, insistent security, right? It's detail. But look at how we discover those are that. It's like, ah, let's just zoom in on about that parent process. See exactly how it works. And when they see how it works, you realize from an anniversary perspective, asking questions, hey, uh, what happened? Where is it replaced, right? 
basically, the manager of the place asked my host off. Basically, he's impossible to replace. Like. Just go ahead and look at the host. Yeah, he can replace. This is this is how you start that. Then back to your question for Viper. Yes, I think the question is maybe to look at the detail. Of course, we have to look at the detail. So, but Viper proved that we are for many years that we take this one. So, uh, even now, the use case and and and, and, and the detail. But, 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 but we cannot, or, or, I mean, there's no full book about the amount of projects, but so possibly we can have other, many other things. Yeah. Sorry, I'm not an expert on the Wi Fi. Uh, yeah. That's a, that's a question. So, you all have a Bluetooth low energy. Mm -hmm. I'm not an expert on Bluetooth. So, what's the difference between Bluetooth low energy and other? Right. Bluetooth Classic, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, again, um, first three generations, uh, Bluetooth Classic. It's like audio streaming, right? Early generation, like 2000, 30 years. See, this is how Bluetooth gets used. Right? And, and 2010, 4.0, that's Bluetooth low energy. So um there's also market share talk about I think today both 90 percent more than 90 percent divides support dual mode, both classic and low energy. So classic is more audio streaming, yeah. Low energy is just more IOTs, like uh, like after tracking of those the right? So phone has both, yeah. And is the normal Bluetooth also vulnerable or like a classic one? Great question. So classic doesn't have this macros problem because macros is like talk about 2010 this problem. So they have they have some other issues, not about this macro than they do. Right, uh left next speaker. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. 